Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the full segment of Weather Center Nazario. Today is Wednesday. Happy Hump Day, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Let's get right on into all the latest information I have for you today. We're on National Hurricane Center's homepage, and the primary focus is still Tropical Storm Philippe, who has winds of now 50 miles an hour as of the 11 a.m. advisory. We have seen a little bit of strengthening as we've gone throughout the day today. Central pressure has dropped 5 millibars from earlier this morning. We had about 1,003 millibars center of circulation. We're down to 998 which is actually pretty impressive considering the harsh environment he's actually moving through right now. We also have 91L in close proximity to Tropical Storm Philippe. A lot of us have been amping up the probability that this will be our next tropical depression, if not Tropical Storm Rena, by now, but it seems like it's taken its sweet time. And I do believe it's because of the interaction between these two cyclones, because they're pretty much right on top of one another. They're almost blurring together at this point. If you look at a infrared satellite image and you see the cloud bands associated with both features, it's almost hard to pick out which one is which outside of the somewhat discernible center of circulation with Philippe that is now wrapped around convection again. Still anticipated to form into Rena though. It's only a matter of time before this system finally takes shape and I do anticipate we're going to see it one way or another over the next couple of days if not by tonight if not tomorrow. It's been holding steady at that 90% chance we may already have tropical depression conditions within this storm feature. But let's talk about Philippe. Philippe is anticipated to make some impacts over the Lesser Antilles especially the Leeward Islands to the north of our Leeward Windward Islands island setup. This has been a huge change over the last 48 hours. The last couple days, we were kind of anticipating him shooting out to sea at this point. But because of this weakening trend and the way we've seen the North Atlantic High reestablish itself to its north, that's why we're seeing it skyrocket to the west as opposed to headed out safely to sea. Some of our models continue to do some interesting things with this guy. We're anticipating a tropical storm as it starts to affect the northern Lesser Antilles and moving into Puerto Rico as a potential tropical depression. However, some of our intensity models do indicate over the next five to seven days, we could actually see some strengthening. And as a matter of fact, the Canadian model and the ICON model both indicate that once it positions itself pretty much right over top the Caribbean islands for that matter, it will start to gain in some strength because the sheared environment it's when within right now is going to start to dissipate and it'll be over those hotter waters of the Caribbean because they're so untapped of any kind of potential loss of energy. So we're definitely watching out for you guys out there. This is a new imminent threat. We have maybe a few days before it's right on top of you knocking at your door. We're not expecting any major impacts, nothing to be extremely worried about, but the fact that we are anticipating tropical storm conditions for our northern Lesser Antilles does mean you need to be close closely monitoring this and timing this out as we go through time because it looks like we're developing a lot more confidence now that this is the track it's going to take because it just doesn't have that physical momentum we'll call it to spin to the poles or spin to the higher latitudes like we were initially anticipating. After that 8 a.m. Monday point you can see how the cone sort of widens because once again we're kind of at an impasse. We're not too sure if it's going to continue westward and just completely be eaten alive by the mountainous terrain over Dominican Republic and Haiti or try to wander back to the north and enter open water again before working its way into the Bahamas or maybe even just to the northeast of their location as well. Once we get to the super ensembles here in a moment, I'll show you the spread. And when I say spread, I don't use that term lightly. We have such a spread in our ensemble products with this storm. It's almost unbelievable. Here you go, folks. As you can see, these are our ensemble plots for Tropical Storm Philippe. And honestly, this looks like a garbled mess. I'll tell you the truth. There is a fair bit of confidence this storm is going to continue off to the west. You can kind of see decent agreement for the most part headed in this general direction direction, keeping it to the north of most of our Caribbean nations. But National Hurricane Center is still predicting we're going to see that southwestward track. And a lot of our deterministic models, the GFS, the ICON, the Canadian model, the Euro, all of them are singing in tune that it will dip a little further to the south and really push into our Caribbean nations. So we are anticipating potential landfalls at this point, albeit of a weakening storm. So that's what we have going for the positives. The negatives are this storm wasn't supposed to do this. This storm has been acting up and because we're losing a lot of those tropical characteristics, and it's kind of fighting a battle right now. It's going back and forth literally and trying to hold on to its intensity. Like I said, it's fairly impressive. We've actually seen a little bit of deepening and strengthening over the last 24 hours. So it'll be very interesting, I'll say, to keep it at a bare minimum what this storm will do as it continues to track off to the west and if this southward direction it tries to take on is actually going to put it in a more favorable environment or if it'll kind of remain at that 40, 50 mile an hour strength as it pushes into our lesser Antilles and then kind of scrapes along to the west, potentially washing out from that point 
point forward. I'm in full agreement with other official sources mentioning they are not fully locked in on this track or intensity. There's such a huge spread, not only in our directional ensembles, but in our intensity models as well. So there's a lot of wiggle room for this storm to kind of do whatever it wants to do with very little lead time for us to get the word out there to folks. So we're watching very closely across the board. You can rest assured in that department. We're going to keep you posted every step of the way. We're going to come on over to our 12Z European ensemble so we can also touch on 91L Futurina for that matter because we're also starting to see a bit of a concerning trend with her in terms of our Bermuda folks out there. So for my Bermuda folks who are watching who've been tuning into my live streams, we're talking about y'all once again because as a result of Philippe moving to the west, we're starting to see Rena in the future also try to stead more to that western track as well. So as you go through time, here we go. We're going through the loop and you can see two distinct systems. They kind of start to overrun each other unfortunately because of the similar tracks they're going to take. If you look at those stronger ensemble members, those are going to be Rena folks. And if you see, we have a good amount of general agreement that at least half, if not maybe one third of the ensemble members want to push it closer to Bermuda. And I will bring you to the 12Z Euro deterministic model here in a second that shows it could get a lot closer for comfort than what we've been anticipating for about a la you know the last week now at this point, because that's how long it's been out there. It's been very steady and building up momentum, but it's out there and a lot of our ensembles and models alike do agree we are going to see some pretty good intensification out of it. Maybe not rapid intensification, but it looks like it will strengthen into our next tropical storm, if not a low-end hurricane, with some of these model products here actually suggesting a major hurricane. Still a lot to be desired, still a lot of wiggle room for both these systems because of the erroneous area that they're in, so we'll keep you posted on that, but we're just kind of communicating exactly what that wiggle room looks like, and unfortunately Bermuda is back in that margin of error, so I'm watching for you guys. We all are. Here is the 12Z main run of the Euro. We were just looking at the Euro's ensembles, and now we're looking at the primary run of the operational run, and if you look closely, I'm going to highlight Bermuda. It's a little hard to spot, but Bermuda's sitting comfortably right in through this area, in between frontal systems and that high pressure over the North Atlantic. And as you track this system through time, if you notice, the Euro does want to keep it fairly weak, at least in its primary run, but notice how it takes a lot more of a northwestward track headed right towards the island on this run. And this has been the general trend for the last 12 to 24 hours with each every six hour run we get of the Euro. So we're definitely watching closely. We could see a bit more in the realm of tropical storm impacts, depending on how much momentum and strength the storm wants to gain. If it does get stronger, that could scoot it a little bit more to the northeast, you know, just thanks to that conservation of angular momentum, it'll swing sharper to the right, to the northeast. If it stays predominantly weaker, we could see a storm coming right up the ocean into the Bermuda area, and we could realize more of those impacts and more of the phenomena than a lot of us were predicting last week and throughout the weekend into this week. So we're definitely watching, guys. I got your back. We all do. It goes without saying, a lot of folks are watching these storms. They've been the talk of the town across the meteorological community, but there's one other area and another piece of evidence I want to bring to the table today. So CPC, Climate Prediction Center, has released their latest tropical hazards outlook chart. And if we zoom on in and you take a look over the Western Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico, we are back under a above 20% chance for tropical cyclone development. Now, I'll caveat that, guys, by saying this is not the end-all, be-all. Obviously, this does not say that we are certainly going to have development, but it's another piece of the puzzle, and this only adds another 5 to 7% confidence in what the Canadian model and a few of our other ensembles have been predicting for the last 7 to 10 days now. So this goes to show that there is a chance we will see a favorable environment return to both the southern Gulf and that western Caribbean source region, just like we talked about when Adalia was coming through our neck of the woods. I'm not going to bring them up for the sake of time, but the MJO is also making a return. It's a little bit weaker from the reports I've been reading, but the MJO will position itself and give us a little bit more of that enhanced upward vertical motion to support tropical convection. And if anything gets out over those hot waters with little shear to deal with, we could definitely see some consolidation in what goes out of there. We just had that tropical wave come through that really inundated a lot of our Caribbean nations, Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, Cuba, even into parts of Florida and the southeast United States saw a lot of that energy. That was a heavily sheared system, but yet you could see the complex thunderstorms we had with it and the severe threats that weren't unfortunately highlighted because it wasn't a distinguished or recognized system. It was just a wave, but we had such significant activity with it. It impacted a lot of people. And that's just a wave, guys. If we get something else forming out there, who knows what could happen? All right, here we are. This is 12Z the Canadian run. We have seen trends over the last 24 hours to support something developing in the Caribbean. As you go through time, 
time, I do have a bit of good news with the 12Z run, but I have a disclaimer coming immediately after that. You get to the back end of the run, and there's our low pressure moving over Costa Rica, Nicaragua, emerging over the extreme Western Caribbean. This model run wants to take it right into the Yucatan, pretty much exactly what we saw with most of the models with Idalia back in August, and then work it straight off to the West, potentially, up towards the Gulf Coast, maybe Louisiana or Texas, if I were to just extrapolate its forward progress, moving in a west-northwest or northwest track. This would actually be best case scenario because I don't anticipate with it encountering so much land, especially the Yucatan and how mountainous the peninsula is, and then having such little time to spend over open water of the Gulf of Mexico as our next trough and cold front comes down to really amp up the sheer intensity over the Gulf of Mexico. This could remain just a rainmaker or disorganized disturbance, maybe a tropical depression, and that's a big maybe. And that's if this can get off the ground and we actually do see development like the Canadian models anticipating. I do predict we're going to continue to see a windshield wipe ring effect with that deterministic model. I don't see why it would suddenly trend down and no longer show a low pressure center with it being consistent for about four days now. Because of the ensemble members and where they're painting a picture of its forward progress, I think we're going to see it go back and forth between a Yucatan weaker system landfall and something projected out into the Caribbean posing more of a threat to our island nations, especially the Cayman Islands and Cuba. So we go through the model run. This is our ensembles now for the Caribbean Gulf of Mexico, and you can see all that low pressure as the gyre starts to kick off, and it's kind of remarkable. At 850 millibars, if you look at the overall wind flow in the streamline charts down the road, you can really see that gyre start to take effect, and what we have going on here is exactly that. We have another little cyclone or a little embedded couplet of vorticity, if you will, that decides to slingshot out over Central America and into open water exactly like Adalia did. So very interesting to see if we get a two-for-one deal. That'd be kind of, you know, unique for this kind of circumstance because records show that typically it's hard enough to get one gyre-related or gyre-induced system. To get two in the same year, that'd be pretty intense, you know? That'd be kind of interesting to see. We'll see how this pans out. We only have one model still predicting this with the GFS and the Euro giving very, very faint whispers of maybe something trying to form up, but for now it's the Canadian model that's full steam ahead on this and the icon just doesn't go that far out. So again, we go forward in time and you can see there's our system right here and unfortunately it looks like the general consensus is it will remain over the Western Caribbean moving right in towards the Cayman Islands and central to Western Cuba, maybe even scraping just to the Western extent of Jamaica and all the ensembles with the Canadian want to take it in this general trend. Call it hype, call it me fear mongering, but I'm just looking at what the data is presenting right now and that's why I think we're going to see the deterministic go from its prediction out over this way to something a little along the lines of this, moving it kind of more in a due north fashion if this continues to trend. It's been trending now. So we'll just have to continue to see what 12 and 0Z looks like as we go day to day. So you go forward in time and you can see that the general trend is either into the Gulf or even further to the northeast away from most of our United States landmass. And then we somehow get another rebound of even lower pressures coming across the Central Caribbean. So we'll have to see what this does, especially with CPC looking back and saying, hey, the Caribbean could be ripe for potential development right during this time frame. So now we have a couple of different entities, both an official source and our models, both deterministic and ensemble, calling for stuff. The GFS echoes this same sentiment, and at the 12Z Euro, if you guys weren't looking off to the east, or I should say the west, excuse me, there were some ensemble members picking up on some development in the Bay of Campeche in the Western Caribbean. So, I don't know, just like I said, picking up breadcrumbs, following the trail. This is the very tail end of the Canadian run, and you can see just in a mass a mass of low pressure or lowering pressures across the Caribbean spreading into Florida and the Bahamas, so we'll definitely have to wait and see. All right, everybody, to wrap this up, what I'm going to do is do another comparison between GFS and Euro. We're not looking for favorable or unfavorable conditions. What I want to show you guys is the split difference between what could drive this system if, if I'm emphasizing that, it takes shape. So if we go through time, you can see on the GFS we have a really dense trough axis dig down across the southeast once again. And what the GFS wants to do is really quickly evacuate this off to the east and make way for a ridge. Now yes, this will support tropical development if we get that anti-cyclone right over top where the Canadian model is predicting we could see some tropical energy pop up. But at this point in the run, this would definitely favor a more westward track until it gets picked up by this trough digging across the southeast and the southern 
southern plains of the United States. We're already past the point of where the models are predicting development if it were to take shape. So this is solution number one highlighted by the GFS. There is still room for a potential system. Again, it's all hypothetical, guys. There is still room for a system to track due north with this solution by the GFS. If we switch over to the Euro, what the Euro wants to do is you get towards the tail end of the run. We still get our anti-cyclone over Central America and parts of Mexico. There comes that trough, so we're in good agreement there. But notice how the trough sticks around for a much longer period of time before it finally evacuates out of the picture. This could do a multitude of things. Number one, drive whatever is down there further to the north. It could also eradicate the system altogether because of the copious amounts of shear and dry air this will likely bring on. Or it could perhaps move our source region and pick up vorticity a little further to the east of where it is kind of right around kind of right around where the canadian model upper level vorticity charts yesterday i showed you guys were indicating it could come off of panama like our vorticity with the wave did or a little closer to nicaragua as opposed to closer to the yucatan costa rica kind of area so a lot of moving pieces here, but I really want to hammer home the fact that we are starting to see more and more evidence compound upon each other. We don't have anything from National Hurricane Center. I don't think we will until we get really extensive layers of evidence to support some possible development. So it's all speculation. I'm communicating to you guys the details I've been seeing consistently day to day. We have a little bit more of a favorable picture looking upon us as of today. 12Z indicates a very weak system immediately moving into land, and it's still the only model, the operational model I should say picking up on any potential development so we're still kind of in that 10 15 percentile that something is going to take shape but the number one reason if you've made it this far into the video that i want to put a lot more emphasis on this and i'm going to say it again Call it fear-mongering, call it hype, guys, but the Canadian model did really well in predicting a system that did exactly what it's predicting now and was our major system to impact a lot more people and take a direct hit into the United States. So that alone is why I'm putting a little more energy and time into this. It did so well with that one, and that one system was the one who made landfall in the southeast as a major hurricane. That alone is enough reason for me to start communicating what I'm saying because we don't need a round two, God forbid. So thank you all for watching. We're going to go ahead and conclude this video today. I really do apologize for having to kind of rush through these, being a little more lackluster in the way I present myself and the way I present my video content. I promise once my schedule in the personal realm gets a little better ironed out, I'll get back to our regularly scheduled programming. And I'm really excited to talk more about this tonight at 8 p.m. on our 8 p.m. Tropics Talk. Hope to see you in there, guys. I hope this week has been treating you well. Have a great rest of your Wednesday, and we'll see you soon. This is Weather Center Nazario, signing out.